to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, today's topic is, what does it mean to follow Jesus? You know, a lot of people say they're believers, grateful believers. I had um, Joe when this come to my door and I asked them, was Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior? And they go, whoa, yeah, we believe. We believe that Jesus was there and he was a good guy. But do you follow him? Is he your Lord and Savior? You know, James 2.19 says, even the demons believe in God. So the question is, do you follow Jesus? So what does it mean to follow someone? You know, to follow someone, you would need to have the mindset and the attitude of the person that you're following. For example, you want to follow the Raiders? You need to have the attitude of the Raider Nation. It's, I know that's a bad example. Forgive me, Lord, but you know what I'm saying. So what 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 is the attitude of Jesus? Let's go to Philippians 2, starting in verse 3. I don't have slides today because Lauren said, Brother Lauren, that slides make him lazy. So we're going to do some Bible exercise today and go through the Bible and look it up by the pages. So what is the attitude of Christ? Starting in verse 3. It says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than ourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take on an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Verse 6. Though he was God, you not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. You want to be like Jesus? It's a popular thing to say. You want to be more like Jesus? You want to follow Christ? You have to have the attitude of Christ. You know, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. That goes against the grain of our society. We do things, we buy things, say things to impress people that we don't even know. Sometimes we do it to impress people that we don't even like. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than ourselves. These are just things that we don't do. So if you want to follow Christ, you have to take on the attitude of Jesus. So in the the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus commands to follow me. Appear quite often. Lost my screen here. So, the command to follow me appears several times. You don't have to look these up. I'll just read them real quick. Matthew. 822, and Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. So like, don't go to the funeral. (laughs) Follow me. Matthew 9, 9. Jesus passed on from there. He saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. 
again in Mark 2.14. And he passed by, he saw, the, saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting on the tax booth and said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And Luke 5.27 says, after this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting in tax booth and said to him, follow me. Got to love tax guys. John 1, 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said, follow me. So I mean, in these cases, he was telling the um, 12 men, the 12 disciples, 12 men who became his disciples to follow him. Um, in Matthew 10, 3 through 4, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, son of Simon, the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed them. They're all told to follow me. So stop whatever you're doing, just follow me. But other times he says, you know, he was speaking to anyone who wanted what he had to offer. There in John 3.16, everyone knows that verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What does it mean to follow Christ? Mark 834. The Lord led me to this scripture, <clears throat> which is why I'm actually here where I am right now, by following the Lord through his word. Mark 834, I've got it on my license plate. It says, and calling the crowd to him it was like with his disciples, he said to them, anyone to come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. You want to follow the Lord? You have to deny yourself. If you're not giving up anything, you're not sacrificing anything, if you're not denying your own desires, then you can't follow the Lord. says right here, you have to deny yourself, take up the cross. And follow him. <clears throat> well, let's go to Matthew. So I'm going to get a Bible workout today. Matthew 10, 34 through 39. Jesus clearly states hear what it means to follow him. It says, don't suppose, don't think, don't even act like I've come here to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies will be members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross, here it is again, and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. It's pretty harsh. Pretty harsh words to follow the Lord. So if you're following the Lord and you don't have to get any sacrifices, any resistance in your life, and according to this scripture, you're not following God. You're following the Lord should bring 
disturbance to your life. You may lose some friends. You may lose family members. If you're truly following God. Following God goes against the grain, as I said before, the grain of society. You can't follow God and please everyone else. It's a sacrifice. So do you want to be like Jesus? Do you really want to follow the Lord? You have to take on the attitude, the mindset of Jesus. Jesus is bringing a sword. He's turning family members against each other. But he says, whoever believes on him shall not perish. This is John 3.16. You know, Jesus is word is not soft. He, ne he never softened the truth. You know, he says the truth will set you free. And the truth is that following him leads to us making some difficult choices. This, Jesus' standards are way higher than what we can do, which is why we need our Lord and Savior. Let's look at them at the Beatitudes. These are the standards of Jesus. Turn to Matthew 5. And I'll just read the first eight of them. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger for thirst righteous for they shall be satisfied blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they seek God blessed are the peacemakers for they should be called the sons of God blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Does that sound like standards you want to keep? Are those things you want to do? You follow Christ. The answer would be yes. So many who had followed Jesus had turned away from him. His disciples, uh, a lot of people who followed Christ had turned away from him because of the word. Go to John 6, 66. It says, after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walk, walk with him. He said that this word is too hard. Who can understand it? Even the disciples that followed him thought it was too difficult. The night he was arrested, every one of them deserted him. These are his disciples. Matthew 26, 56, disciples who were to follow him deserted him. Verse 56, but all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets must be fulfilled. Then all the disciples fled. They left him. Mark 14, 50, real quick, and they all left him and fled. You know, on that night, following Christ meant his arrest and execution. Um, rather than risk his own life, Peter denied that he even knew Jesus three times. Matthew. 26, 69 through 75. His own disciple 
deny it. It's like, I don't even know you. And we want to follow Christ. What do you do in a good situation where your life says stake? Or do you claim to know Jesus? Verse 59. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard and a servant girl came up to him and said, you also was with the Jesus the Galilean. Because, but he denied it before them all saying, I don't know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystander, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I don't know this man. After a little while, the bystanders came up to and said to Peter, certainly you are the one of them for you, your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and swear, I don't know the man. And of course, as Jesus said, the rooster crowed three times. So do you want to follow Christ? What do you do when the heat is on? What do you do when you're on your job and your boss wants you to do something that is ungodly, dishonest? Do you stand up for Jesus? Do you say that I know who Jesus is? I'm going to follow the Lord. Or do you deny the Lord? Is the rooster crowing in your life? To truly follow Christ, he has to become everything to us. You know, I had a, a, a friend, a guy I knew who said, you know, you Christians, all you do is follow. You know, I'm a leader. I don't follow any." I'm I'm the boss. I don't need to follow. You guys are just a bunch of followers, a bunch of sheep. And my response is that everyone follows something. Friends, culture, family, your desires, or God. Yeah, everybody's got to follow something. But as Christians, we can only follow one thing. It clearly states in Matthew 6, 24. It says, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. If you only have one master, God says we are to have no other gods before him. It says that in Exodus 23, you don't have to go there. It says you should have no other gods before me. Deuteronomy says you should have no other gods before me. Mark 12, verse 30, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul, all your mind and all your strength. What does it mean to follow Christ? Truly follow Christ. You can't follow anything else. You can't serve two masters. I had a friend that I just asked him, I called him up one day and said, so how's it going? Oh, you know, just chasing the dollar. <laughs> you know, you should be chasing the Lord. You can't follow anything else. Luke 9, 23, which goes with Mark. It said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. Whoever wants me to be my disciple must deny themselves and follow me. There is no, there's no such thing as a, a, a uh, halfway disciple. You can't have foot on both sides of the fence. No halfway. You can't be 
Guy says, you're lukewarm. You're either hot or you're cold. I'm lukewarm, I spit you out of my mouth. You know, we, we, we go to church now, and this is such a, not all churches. Some churches have such a watered-down gospel. That's not following Christ. You know, we're not denying ourselves. We're going in there. With, it's all pleasurable and comfortable, and it's okay to be, have comfort. God blesses us. It's okay to be comfortable. But we we serve a, a mighty God, a mighty Lord. If you want to follow him, you got to take on that mindset. You got to take on the attitude of Christ. And we can't do it on our own strength, on our own willpower. You know, we need to surrender to Christ. We need to allow Christ to take over our lives. In Acts 13.22, Jesus says that David was a man after his own heart. That he will do everything I want him to do. Do we do what God wants us to do? Are we after the heart of Jesus? Again, we can't do it on our own strength. You know, the Pharisees were good examples of those who were trying to obey God. And they did. They tried to obey the laws and rules of God, on the, but in their own strength. And by doing it, it only led to them, to their arrogance. And they distorted the whole purpose of what God's law was. Jesus came and fulfilled the law. Luke eleven thirty nine it says, And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. Now we all wanna we all wanna look good. Show that you know we're clean on the outside, but what's on the inside? That's how you know you have a true believer, a true follower of Christ. You know, that's why a lot of people don't want to come to church because they don't think that they look good enough. You know, there was, was one church that um, I don't want to mention the name of it. It was on the TV evangelist, and you had to dress a certain way to get into the sanctuary. They let people come, but if you weren't dressed and looked a certain way, they put you in the overflow room. And you had to be looking like, this is down in Southern California, you had to be looked like Hollywood to get in this church. It's okay to look good, but what's on the inside? That's how you know if you've got a follower of Jesus. Matthew 23, 24 says you blind guides straining out a gnat when you swallow a camel. The church is starting to accept the morals and things of this world. Homosexuality now is adultery is accepted. Is that following Christ? Whatever the standard is. Got to be politically correct. We don't want to offend anyone. Jesus said back in Matthew, does this word offend you? Do you want to leave too? You need to have the mindset of Christ. Jesus gave his disciples the secret to truly following him, but they they didn't know, they didn't recognize it at the time what he was talking about. It says in John six thirty sixty three, the Spirit gives life. 
the flesh counts for nothing. The book of John really shows who Jesus was. Praying the disciples was what was to come. In verse 65, he goes, and this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. have to go through Christ. I love that scripture. I call it there. Oprah Winfrey. But she says, you can go to Christ. You can get to God any, anyway. You don't have to go through Jesus. Well, that's not what my Bible says. That you have to go through Christ to get to the Father. Disciples, they walk with Jesus for three years. Learning, observing, and saw his miracles um even still they, they could not follow him faithfully in their own strength they needed a helper god gives us a helper the holy spirit we can't do this alone we can't follow jesus on our own we need the help of the holy spirit People try to do all kinds of things on their own. All kinds of help, self-help groups, but they're good. Counseling is good. But if you don't have Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're not following the Lord through his word, chances are it's not going to be a successful venture. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all these things and bring to your remembrance what I have said to you. Then John 16, 7, and Jesus told the disciples, says, Nevertheless, I... I, I I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. The disciples didn't understand that. They did later. But at the time, they were distraught, losing their king or one who they followed. The Holy Spirit indwells in the heart of every believer. And it's funny when people come to church, oh, the Spirit is here. No, it's it's already there. <laughs> it indwells in your heart if you're a true believer. Galatians 2.20 says, uh, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Romans 8.16 I thought we were going to do a Bible exercise today. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit bears witness to that. What does it mean to follow the Lord? Hebrews 13.5 Keep your life free from the love of money. We love some money, don't we? God says, keep your life free from the love of money. And be content 
with what you have. For you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Are you content with what you have? Do you love money above all things? The Lord says, keep your life free of that. Be content with what you have. The world teaches you to get more. Just keep, get all you can. Make all the money you can. It's okay to have money. Just don't let that be your Lord. Jesus told us, Followers, the disciples, disciples that not to start testifying of him until you have been clothed with the power on high. You can't go out preaching, testifying about the Lord until you have been clothed <laughs> with the power from on high. You're not filled with the spirit. You don't belong. Be testifying for the Lord. Although we have those. Jesus said, wait. So you have been blessed with the Spirit before you start talking about me. Luke 24, 49 says, And behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. When the Holy Spirit came upon those first believers at uh, Pentecost, they had the power. They needed to follow Christ, even to the death. You know, it's one thing to die for something that you believe in but disciples were killed were persecuted and were told to stop preaching about Jesus so I don't know about you it's, you know that's one thing to die for something that you believe in but if, if something that I didn't believe that was true I'm certainly not going to die for it <laughs> It's like, so obviously they were following Christ. They believed in Christ. They saw it. So no, who would die for something that someone told you to stop? Okay, well, I'll stop. But, you know, I, I didn't see it anyway. But if you saw it, and you died for it. Because they had the power they needed to follow Christ. Even to the death. As followers of Jesus, do you have that power? Are you using that power? You know, following Jesus means that we should strive to be like him. We always say, oh, I want to be like Jesus. Be more like Jesus. Well, what, is, what does that mean? Jesus always obeyed his father. So that's what we need to do. Strive to do is obey the father. John eight twenty nine says, And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone for I'll always do the things that are pleasing to him. doing everything that is pleasing to God. Are we glorifying God in everything we do? John 15, 10. Keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. You know, to truly follow Christ we need to make him the boss. Make him our boss. Now we have all kind of bosses. You know, bosses at home. My wife's my boss. That boss said work. But 
to follow Christ, you need to make him the boss. That's what it means to make Jesus the Lord of our life. He's the boss. Romans 10, 9 says, because if you confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Second Corinthians 4, 5. This, what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for Christ's sake. You know, to follow the Lord, every decision that we make, <clears throat> every dream that we have, should be filtered through his word. And the goal is glorifying him in everything. You filter your thoughts through the word versus do not lean on your own understanding, lean on the word of God. I love this scripture here, 1 Corinthians 10 31. <clears throat> I used to have this plaque on my desk in my office. And it's 1 Corinthians 10 31. So, so, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, all to the glory of God. Whatever you do, whatever you work at, <laughs> what you eat, everything should be done to the glory of God. You know, we are we are not saved by the things that we do, as it says in Ephesians two, eight, nine. We're not saved by works. For the grace of God, you've been saved through faith. It's not your own doing. It's a gift from God. It's not a result of works so that you can't boast about it. You did nothing. It's a free gift of salvation. So it's because of his grace that we should want to please him in everything that we do. This is only accomplished as we let the Holy Spirit have complete, complete control of every area of our lives. That's what it means to follow the Lord. Ephesians 5.18 says, do not get drunk with wine, for that's debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. We should not let anything control our lives, but the Holy Spirit. It's okay to drink everything in moderation, but when we let other substances, other things influence or control our lives. There's no room for God. We have to give complete control of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 2.14 The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God where they are folly to him. He's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The message of the cross is foolish to non-believers. They don't understand. Like many of your followers, it says in John 6, that they left him. They didn't understand. Jesus spoke in parables because the non-believers wouldn't understand it. The one the true believers would, even though they didn't understand at the time, they would to seek the Lord so they can get a better understanding. 
and what he was talking about. The scriptures empower us with spiritual gifts, First Corinthians talks about that, and it comforts us um, in John 14, 16. Because I will ask the Father and will give you another helper to be with you forever. God loves to give us helpers. Gives you a wife. It's a suitable helper. But he knows that you need help. God only knows that us men, we need help. But we have to give our lives the control over to Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Again, in John 14, 26. Said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you these things and bring remembrance all that I've said to you. In closing, so to follow Christ means that we are going to apply the truths that we learn from his word. You can't follow Christ if you're not reading his word. A lot of people try it. They can go to church every Sunday and that's it. You know, Brother Ponce, you said this Scripture, the uh, statistic, two out of ten. Okay. That narrow path of righteousness. Only a few find it. We need to apply the truths that we learn from his word. And live as if Jesus walked beside us in person. That's what it means to follow the Lord. All I have for you today. Open it up for you guys. Praise the Lord, Brother Daryl. It's open up for discussion. That was a very good message in all truth. It's very much, you know, if you want to be a follower of Christ, yes, you have to be in the Word daily. That is that is a must, and you know. We have to deny ourselves. We have to give it all to Jesus. And remain in the word is a very important part of that. That is very true. And yet, wonderful things you covered today. I very much appreciate hearing that. And I agree totally with all of it. Thank you very much. Praise God. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, all scripture reference are very good, and then it will really happen in our life also. As we are the follower of Jesus Christ, we must bear a fruit, and then we are, and then we see the Ephesians chapter five verse eighteen of filling the Holy Spirit. We need to control God, the Holy Spirit, to be follower of Jesus Christ. And I love the question. Is what is uh, one thing is. Do you follow Jesus? And then what is the attitude of Jesus? We have to learn the attitudes of Jesus. And if we are really follow follower of Jesus, we must change our mindsets. Changing mindsets is very important, I think. And second is with our attitudes. There, so we see in the book of let me see again the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 1 to 11, we mostly talk about doctrinal issue, mostly salvation. Yet we are we are justified by faith. But if we see in practical lesson, first point in verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brother, in views of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice. As holy and pleasing to God, there is your spiritual acts of worship. But if we see in the verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transform your renewing of your mind. See how it is very important, the renewing of our minds. Changing our minds is very important to be follow the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. We we'll see in the book of Romans. A great blessing, a great passage of the scripture. I love it. Thank you so much. Amen. 
Thank you for the study, uh, Brother Daryl. <clears throat> I like the way you called me out at the beginning because um, I had said before that it kind of makes me lazy when the guys do it. That's not to discourage the guys from doing it. I think it's probably easier to stay organized that way. And I know myself sometimes I'm fumbling around and doing stuff. And um, I don't have a, I actually don't have a personal laptop to to do this stuff with, or I, pro I may go to, you know, the PowerPoint, you know, type thing just to have it a little better organized, but a you know, wonderful message. Um, I just, I, I love how you're just, every every point is with scripture you're just interpreting scripture with scripture i don't have to worry when you're teaching so i like that um one of one of the passages that kind of stuck out to me was matthew uh, 10 34 um where jesus said uh, do not think that i came to bring peace on the earth i did not come to bring peace but a sword for i came to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. And for some, for whatever reason, my mind kind of went to um, the uh, scripture passages about Jesus, about the birth of Jesus, where he's called the Prince of Peace. There might be some Old Testament passages as well that refer to Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And I don't, again, I don't know why I thought of this, but I know sometimes, um, people are always trying to poke holes in scripture. And I think um, the apostle Peter said to always be ready to give, um, you know, to, to I, either to give it an, a, a defense or an, an account, you know, for, yeah. the, for the hope that is within you. Right. Um, and sometimes it's this, sometimes you have to defend the word of God in the church. Some, because sometimes there's, there's immature believers that don't understand the word of God or there's unbelievers in the church and it, it might even happen out of the church. But um, so how do you, so the question I had was how do you reconcile Jesus is, is called the Prince of peace, but then right here, he himself says, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. And, and you guys, you guys can definitely expand on this, but when, um, when we refer to Jesus as the Prince of peace, the peace that is referred to as is, peace with God not necessarily not necessarily peace in the world just for the sake of it as in world peace right oh mm -hmm. you're born again and you have Jesus so now it's just going to be peace all the time and and you're right I think you said that this is a very I don't know if you said this is an offensive passage or you you made some comment about it but this is this harsh. is striking yeah it's harsh very harsh and this isn't a popular one like you don't you don't see this on a picture you know that someone will put up or you know, with really neat artwork, maybe we should do that more often. Um, but thank you for the study, brother. And thank you for, you know, ca causing me to think more deeply about, about, you know, my relationship with the Lord. Praise God. Yeah, brother Daryl, excellent message. This message should be, should be preached through, uh, across America because American Christianity is the complete opposite of this. You know, you can be, prideful and call yourself a christian you can not deny yourself you know and love yourself and be called a christian you can you can hold grudges and call yourself a christian you know you can hate and call yourself a christian you can abort babies and call yourself a christian you can divorce and the list goes on and on and on and i love the the, the you know you started off i know by by talking about the raiders and becoming a raider fan and the word fan is fanatic right you want to become a Raider fan, go to the stadium. Everyone's wearing the gear. And same thing with Christianity. If you're going to be a Christian, then you need to wear Jesus. You know, it's not just a word thing. It's actually a, a life thing, you know. So we have to learn to live like Jesus. And how do we learn to live like Jesus? By reading his word, just like you said. And so as you were as you were speaking, you know, what does it mean to be a, a follower of Jesus? You know, I, you started off by talking about we have to have the same attitude as Jesus. And you can only find that out through reading the scripture. You can't find that out by going to church on Sunday, once a week. You know, you, the same attitude as Jesus. What does it mean to follow Jesus? That you have to be humble. He gives grace to the humble. We're saved by grace. So there's no way you can be prideful and be saved by grace because he gives grace to the humble and he opposes the proud. So on the contrary, if you're prideful, there's no way you can be a Christian. There's, there's no possible way. Jesus was not prideful. 
Jesus said to follow me. And, and then the fact that you have to deny yourself, you have to pick up your cross. You know, there's a lot of things that I want. Well, I have to deny myself if I want to be a follower of Jesus. You know, you talked about the guy wanting to go bury his father or bury his someone. And, and Jesus is like, follow me. You know, I love the, the little quote you said, you know, that if you want to be a follower of Jesus, you need to make him the boss of your life. But it made you, it, the whole thing just made me think of, of American altar call. And I thought to myself, and I wrote some notes here saying, if you had an altar call right now, you know, you just finished preaching this, and Daryl said, all right, we're going to have an altar call. Anyone, are you ready to die to yourself? Are you ready to deny yourself? Yeah. You know, usually we say, do you want to invite Jesus into your heart? But in this case, are you ready to deny yourself? Are you ready to pick up your cross? Are you ready to let your pride go and become humble? How about this one? Are you ready to forgive everyone? If you want to be forgiven, you must forgive. It's a must. You know, and, and so you think throughout scriptures, Paul, the apostle Paul, a former Pharisee, he couldn't hold on to his Pharisee beliefs and still hold on and, and, and still become a follower of Jesus. Like Thang said, it was a complete mindset change. You know, it, it was a, a true repentance. He had to become totally different. In fact, all the disciples did, all the apostles, they were first called Christians in Antioch, Acts 11, 26. Why? Because people, they reminded people of Jesus. It wasn't because they went around saying they were Christian. They reminded people of Jesus, and that's what we should be doing as well. You know, we don't need to tell people we're Christians. They should be able to see that we're Christian by the way we live. Because we live like Jesus and we follow Jesus, we deny ourselves. We are humble. We have the same attitude as Jesus had. We pick up our cross. We follow him. We pray. We read. You know, we fellowship. It's it's, it's a whole different life. And, um, you know, you talk about... What happens when the heat is turned on? Do we deny him? No, because remember the remember the seed that, that, that was thrown into the into the soil? One of them received it with gladness. But when the heat was turned on, they left and they produced no fruit. Those are not Christ-like people. You know, Christ-like people are willing to die for their master. And so I love the whole entire message. I think this message should be preached all around the world, man. It was great. So thank you for sharing and thank you for all the scripture and praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I actually was truly blessed in, in studying for this. And it's like, you know, made me do some serious thinking myself. You know, are you are you following just just a, a great reminder? Because we do say we you know we, we we stay on course sometimes and we do good things, and then sometimes you you can you know wander. And so this you got to stay in the word, got to stay on track, stay on that path. And uh, you know it's like it's always like you know what they call them whammies. What about me? You know, are we are we doing that? So it's like denying yourself. You know, we always want to look for our own interests, look for the interests of others. Be humble. Be a follower of Christ. Brother Lauren, want to close us up in prayer?